Hey there berries, welcome to my Jana support guide for season 12. If you're new here, then we do lots of support guides and gameplays and tier lists on this channel. So make sure you subscribe to be all up to date with that. We've already covered Nami and Soraka for this season. And we're looking to do Senna and all your other favorite supports very shortly. But for this video, we're doing Jana. And if you're new to my type of style of guides, we're going to be covering everything from runes, to the abilities, skill orders, and items, and some little laning phase and gameplay tips uh, that you can use into your solo queue games and learn how to get better at Jenna. So as you can see on the screen, this is the rune page that we're going to be using. Um, it might be a little bit different than what you're used to, but it's still pretty noob friendly, so don't be afraid to test that out in your games. But it's the Glacial Augment Jenna build. Um, Basically, whenever you do crowd control, three like frost lasers will come out and freeze around the target and slows them down dramatically. And they also do less damage to your teammates. So it's like a mini exhaust, essentially, as well. Uh, this does have a little cooldown, uh, but the cooldown is relatively sh short. So generally, you'd be getting this off once or maybe even twice uh, in a team fight if the team fight is lasting a little bit longer. So we've got the Glacial Augment, we've got the Magical Footwear. Um, you might not be used to this rune. Um, basically, after 12 minutes, you get boots for free, provided that you have a spare inventory slot. Sometimes like a biscuit from the biscuit delivery takes up a slot or a health potion. Just make sure you have that slot free uh, later on into the game to make sure you get those boots put into your inventory. But basically that saves you 300 gold and they also the boots also have a little bit extra movement speed on top of it so you save 300 gold and you gain 10 movement speed if you manage to get takedowns so whether that's kills or assists you get the boots even sooner so it's not uncommon to get the free boots around about the nine minute mark uh, if the laning phase is going particularly well for you um, but you'll get them at least by the 12 minute mark uh, to help with this build um, Jano does have some slight mana issues uh, depending on how often she needs to do use her abilities uh, but the biscuits help facilitate that and ensure that you can maintain mana while in the early portion of the laning phase Cos cosmic insight is a nice little generic um you know rune it gives you a uh, lower cooldown on your summoner spells so usually you might be running like the heal for example or an exhaust plus the flash puts those on the lower cooldown the item haste on this will work with an item that we're going to be taking uh, the Moonstone that will uh, help with that too. Uh, or if you are opting into some of those other mythics or other items, like you're picking up a Redemption, which we'll talk about later if you're not familiar, it will reduce the cooldown of that as well. So nice little item benefit because Jenna will have some items on her that do have, you know, a, a set cooldown. The Resolve Tree, um, the Glacial Augment, just going back to that quickly, um, does scale a, a lot from heal and shield power. Uh, so the Revitalize from the Resolve not only will buff Jenna's own heals and shields, which she has, uh, it will also increase your Glacial Augment slow. So some nice synergy there. Uh, and then you have the Bone Plating, which is just some, ge some generic uh, damage reduction every now and then for you. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just a nice little extra rune. In terms of the little stat runes at the bottom, I like going Ability Haste just to get those cooldowns off slightly quicker. Uh, the Adaptive Force uh, the, is basically giving you Ability Power to make your shields and your heals stronger. And the Armor Rune basically will make you tankier against taking damage from enemy AD carries, minions and turrets. Now if you know you're going up against double magic damage, then you might want to change this over to the Magic Resist Rune. And that will help you survive a little bit easier during the laning phase. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go heading over into the practice tool. Where we'll start talking about all the other things about abilities, items and showing you how to do that into your games. So now we're going to be talking about Janna's abilities, skill orders and how to use those abilities in team fights. And then we're going to be moving over to the items for season 12. So firstly Janna's passive. Basically just gives her movement speed when she's going towards allied champions and allied champions going towards Channa get movement speed basically you know, as basic as that uh, they have to be in this kind of circle here in order to facilitate the extra movement speed but it's pretty generous and you know in the laning phase and in the middle of a team fight 
allies will be getting sped up if they're moving towards you, essentially. Now, remember we've taken the Glacial Augment, so whenever we do crowd control, that's going to spawn those three Glacial Lasers, which I'm just going to showcase here with a Tornado. So those will be popping off in my explanations, so don't get too confused um, about those. But uh, the Janna's first ability is her Tornado, it's her Q ability. When you do your first bus and press, it's going to leave a a Tornado under, under Janna's feet. And then you can either let it go off on its full duration, or you can press Q early to basically set that tornado off. So if I do a quick double Q tap, you can see how I let the tornado go a bit quicker, but it doesn't go as far uh, as if it were to be fully charged. So if I do a quick Q tap here towards the, the direction of the inhibitor, you can see how it doesn't quite reach it, but if we do a fully charged tornado, ends up basically going an extra flash, flash and a half distance into the inhib. The longer you charge this as well, you also would do more damage. And also the knockup is slightly stronger. Now at the moment, there is a slight bug where the longer duration of the knockup increases glacial augment dramatically on the ground. But I believe for 12.3, this should be fixed. So we're currently on 12.2. So if you're watching this a week after this video has been posted, uh, Glacial Augment won't be quite as nuts on Janna. <laughs> but it's still going to be pretty good. So this is kind of like your main like disengage ability. You're going to be using these uh, in the laning phase to disengage from jungle ganks and enemy supports coming on to engage on yourself or your AD carry. So quite often in lane, it'll be just a Q double tap like that, just to disengage and then run in the other way. But there are a couple of ways that you can use to engage this and I'll show this later on, um, probably near the end or after the, we've covered the abilities, just so I can give you guys some tips on how to, to play that out. But for now, we're gonna move on to the W. The W got changed a lot if you are used to playing Janna in previous seasons, Janna's W you used to do a lot more damage, and now um, it does still does the slow, uh, and also Janna gets passive movement speed when have, when putting points in this ability. So every point that you put in, her movement speed is going to go up while this little bird essentially is around. When you decide to finally point and click and W an enemy champion. You'll slow down the enemy champion by a considerable amount, but you'll lose your bird until the, the cooldown comes back, and that, that reduces your movement speed. So you have to wait until the little birdie comes back in order to get your movement speed back. But this used to be a big harassing tool in Janna, and unfortunately in Season 12, the damage from this is pretty bad. So mainly you're using this as a, once again, another disengage tool, like your Q, to slow down one target to help your ally to get out of a bad situation. Now Jenna's E has also been changed for Season 12. So Jenna's E is a shield that you can shield an ally champion. You can also shield turrets, which is quite unusual as not many spells in League interact with turrets like this. So you can give your turrets a little shield to help them, you know, survive potentially a little bit longer. Or you can use them on allied champions. Now when you shield an ally, this shield slowly depletes over time. And also you're going to be giving that target uh, attack damage. So max points stacks on the Janna's E gives the target 40 attack damage, which is quite a lot. Uh, which is a lot of basically free gold of extra damage. But that is only for when the shield is active. When the shield goes away, they won't be receiving that uh, attack damage buff. As you wish. They've also introduced a new passive onto this E. So once you put at least one point in your E, any time that you impair enemy champion's movement, whether it's from your Q, the tornado knockup, whether it's from the W, the slow, 
a pushback from your ultimate, which we'll talk about in a second, or the glacial augment slow, you're just passively going to get 20 heal and shield power for 5 seconds. So the ideal is you crowd control someone or impair someone's movement speed. So in this case, we can just W an enemy champion. That little white bar will then appear above the E to indicate that you've now got that 20% heal and shield power. And then that's the perfect time to shield an ally just to make that shield a bit stronger. Now also on top of that, that is also going to increase your glacial slow. It takes a little while for it to update on the tooltip when you mouse over it, but it will be in play. So it's going to give you a considerable longer slow um, on the glacial augment. So, And that is going to be tied in automatically. So when you do your knock up to proc your glacial augment, the glacial augment won't proc off the W because that's just a slow. You have to basically root, knock up, stun, immobilize the target in order to proc glacial augment. Because you are knocking up a target with your Q, that passive is going to kick in straight away. It's going to make this glacial augment slow stronger. And if you potentially were paying attention, the glacial augment was also proccing the healing shield power to make your glacial augment stronger. So it just all works nicely in one tidy kit. Lastly, Janna's ultimate is Monsoon. She basically does an AoE, area of effect heal for for everyone, in champions and minions inside the circle. And it knocks back enemy champions. So if we go up to these champions here, we can push them back. And as you can see, that also procs glacial augment. If I get in between these two uh, little target dummies, you can see they get nudged back. They would get pushed back further, but... Unfortunately, they're quite close to the wall, so we can pop in another one just to show that. Enemy champion. You can see they go out of the, the whole range of the circle. So the heal on this is really nice, so if you can get this channeled off completely, um, you will get a very decent chunk of healing to, for everyone involved inside that circle. Um, but don't be afraid as well just to tap the R just to help disengage from like an assassin in an emergency situation and then just use that as a tool to then help continue peeling off enemy assassins off your carries. So different situations you might want to just press R once and just let that heal go off. Maybe there's like a global ultimate coming down like a Karthus and you just need to make sure everyone's topped up. Or there's no real need to disengage, but people need healing. Um, you know, it's just a it's a nice little extra top top tool option if you need if you need it essentially. Sometimes in the laning phase, if both you and your AD carry are half HP, and you both really need to stay in the lane, it can be a good idea just to pop that uh, early in the laning phase. Ideally, if you're able to get a quick slow or a knock up on a on an enemy champion, and that's going to make you heal twenty percent stronger because of the uh, the passive on your E. Uh, and you can just use that as a tool just to get your both your and AD carries health back up to full HP. And then that means you can carry on in the laning phase for another couple of extra minutes. One extra note as well in terms of summoners on Janna. I personally like taking summoner heal with her because of this healing shield power. And you also will be running revitalized as well. And, you know, if you're slowing, able to slow or crowd control um, an enemy champion and then proc your heal, it's going to make your heal a little bit extra stronger, an extra 20% stronger. So it's worth doing if you're able to. The ability skill order for Janet is going to vary game to game. So Monsoon, your ultimate, you're going to want to take every, you know, whenever it pops up, level 6, 11 and 16. Now level 1 is where it's going to vary game to game. If you're going up against the hard engage like a Leona or a Nautilus or a Thresh or an Alistair, something like that, you might want to take the Howling Gale to help disengage from that. 
or if you're worried about the enemy team coming in level one for a jungle invade, Howling Gale is a really good disengage tool. If you're not worried about any of those things, then put a point in your E, then you, then you can shield your jungler so they don't take as much damage uh, on when, the, when you're helping them pull. Um, and also it will mitigate some skill shot damage coming through in the level one. Um, yeah, that's basically, you know, the, the only real kind of switch up here is that level one. Um, if you are still worried about hard engage, you're going to be doing, so it'd be Q and then E and then W. So that will be your skill order. If you're not worried about hard engage, then it will probably look like something like E, Q, Q and then W, and then you're going to want to max your E first. So max out your E, all your points in E whenever you can at four, five, seven, and nine. And then you're going to want to max your W. So that would be you know, generally level three for the Zephyr. And again, at eight, 10, 12, 13. And then you're putting your rest of your points in Q um, at the end of the game. You're leaving that last because the Q point scanning is pretty bad. Uh, and the W at least gives you um, some higher percent on the slow on the enemy target and also gives you some passive movement speed when your W is ready. So a little bit of extra utility there coming from the Zephyr and just you know, the, the shield is just super good right now, especially with that shield and heal passive. Um, big shields, more attack damage for your AD carry. Um, there's nothing not to, to not like. Not like, not, not, not like. <laughs> Now let's talk about some tips that you can do in the in the laning phase in particular. Uh, the tornado is something that I really want to highlight as you can actually use this as an engage tool. And there's a couple of cheeky things that you can do in order to help facilitate that. So if you have a uh, river control, it's uh, it's quite nice to, to chuck out tornadoes through here. Let it do full channel. If you're able to get a knock up, the glacier is going to keep them in place quite a lot, quite a long time, and then that can be a really nice way to to catch out. This is pretty nice if you're playing with like a poking AD carry, like a Caitlyn or an Ezreal, will help them set up for skill shots quite nicely. Or if there's a jungler, an allied jungler, and this this brush here as well, you know, you're going to be helping facilitate you know a potential really nice gank there as well. Now we're going to be talking about items. And we're kind of in the perfect space uh, in the lane here to talk about items. I personally take Relic Shield on Janna. It's actually one of the only situations on an Enchanter where I'm taking Relic Shield. So Janna's poke in lane is now really, really bad. And you're primarily playing quite passive. Um, and doing trades on Janna right now is not great. But the... That's her big con, is that trades in lane are not great. But the huge pro is that she's so good at disengaging that generally it is quite hard to die on Janna. And when you get to those mid-game team fights, you're going to be preventing a lot of deaths on your team. So you're basically the savior of the team. <laughs> um, but you won't be doing as much harassment as much as like a Soraka. Or a Nami. The playstyles are quite opposite to that in any phase. And in fact, she's probably the most passive uh, support that you can potentially play. Um, that doesn't necessarily she's the, the easiest to play because you're still going to need to react if you're getting engaged on by any supports. You're going to need to be quick on those double Qs to disengage and be, be a little bit smart and sometimes lucky on landing those fully channeled Qs to help facilitate ganks for your jungler. But generally, you're not wanting to trade. So that's why we go into Relic Shield. So if you're unfamiliar with this item, if you've not played um, tank supports, you probably have never picked up Relic Shield. So when you hit a minion that's 30% health or below, you execute the minion. So it instantly dies. And then you and an allied champion standing next to you get the full amount of the gold. So... You're going to primarily be wanting to execute cannon minions. So saving one relic shield charge for a cannon minion. So you might be wondering what these little three blobs flying around me are. And each one of those indicate a relic shield charge. So we'll be executing uh, cannon minions. And ideally melee minions as well with some of the extra charges. You don't really want to execute caster minions. Because they give you the, less, the least amount of gold. 
So what we could do here is we can spawn some minions to help showcase the relic shield proc. So you can see as this melee minion is getting low HP, we want to auto them when they're low on health uh, to make sure that you and your AD carry get the gold. So you can see the effect there of me getting the gold and my carry getting the gold. And then the cannon one is the big one that you really want to save at least one of those charges for. And that's basically what you're going to be wanting to do throughout the entire laning phase is making sure you're executing minions, disengaging, and trying to facilitate uh, you know, the engages with your tornado when possible. That target dummy just leveled up, I didn't realize that was possible. And also just shielding your AD carry from potential skill shots and random bits of damage. Right, let's get rid of these minions. And let's go into more depth of the other items that we'll be taking on to Janet. So we're starting off with Relic Shield. And as you can see, we've got these slightly magical footwear. Those are those boots that we were talking about in the runes that they come through naturally at 12 minutes. At the top right-hand corner, it's now 20 minutes onto the clock, so that's why we have those for free in our bag. So we essentially save 300 gold from doing that. And as you can see, because we're playing so passive, uh, the risk of death is pretty low, and there's no real re reason to, to to trade that much. So we're not we don't really need the extra movement speed, but we are getting some movement speed off the W passive and our passive passive <laughs> so we're getting natural movement speed anyway so getting uh the boots too like i sometimes like doing on sarakura and nami so like uh, the boots of lucidity for example isn't super urgent early on there are two mythics that um are suitable for jenna and that is shredi's which is on the suggested item here and we have moonstone for the glacial build I personally prefer Moonstone, and I believe it's the 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 my my personal favorite. So if you're not sure, go Moonstone. Once again, the reason for this is this will generate uh, healing shield power, and healing shield power gives you a lot of extra slow on your glacial augment. So as you're going through the game, it's not uncommon for your glacial augment to hit that 90% slow mark. And the slow in team fights is absolutely ridiculous. And don't forget, while those enemy champions are in that slow, the damage is also reduced by 15%. So you're basically doing like a mini exhaust on multiple targets. And that's where her true power really comes in from those kind of hidden numbers that you're not seeing from, you know, crowd controlling, the mini exhaust, slowing them down. It's really tilting if you're on the enemy team to have to deal with that. So Moonstone's my favorite. Then you want to opt in into those those tier two boots. Some nice extra stats on them anyway with the cooldown reduction and the summoner speed. So this is basically your, your main kit, upgrading your relic shield, moonstone and the boots. Now there's two items here that I want you to consider when playing Janna. It's either the Chemtech Putrefier if you're up against a lot of healing. So you say if you're playing like against a Soraka, Maybe there's um, some shield bows, mythics on the enemy team, so they're sustaining quite a lot. Or just generally champions that just do a lot of healing anyway, like Vladimir. You're definitely going to want to pick up a Chemtech. If you're unsure, ask your team if you need to buy one. It's okay to ask that if you're not sure. Um, but if you just generally don't know and your team doesn't know, just pick one up anyway. Because 60% Grievous wins whenever you shield or heal an ally is huge healing mitigation against the enemy team if they do have that healing. So if you're unsure, just pick up up anyway, just as, you know, as a safety net measure. If you do know that you don't need this chem tech in, get redemption. Why? Once again, it's because of the healing shield power. It gives you another 20% healing shield power. So your heals and your shields are going to be way better. And also your slow on Glacial is going to be even stronger as well. A lot of people don't know that you can use Redemption while dead. I know. I recently got a... <laughs> slightly off topic. I got a Redemption kill um, while I was dead. I posted it on TikTok. And the amount of people that didn't know that you could use Redemption while dead was, was kind of high. It was maybe a little bit too much. Um, but this also works with your Cosmic Insights, so we're going to get some Item Haste, which basic 10 Item Haste is 10% um, cooldown 
uh, on your items. So the redemption is going to be uh, off cooldown a little bit quicker. Does a does a big circle here, delayed after a couple of seconds. Anyone in this circle will be healed, and uh, any enemy champions inside that will take ten percent true damage. So in the middle of a team fight, you're actually contributing to uh, a decent amount of damage if you land on a couple of champions, particularly if they're tanks. And you know, you're going to be healing your team. And once again, that healing is also going to be increased um, by your healing shield power. So you've got lots of healing shield power. And so this redemption ends up being pretty chunky, even when you're dead. So when you're dead, you can use this. Um, there is a there is a range on this. It's not completely global. But, you know, as you can see from the minimap over here, uh, the range on this is, is pretty massive. So from where I'm standing, I can use this all the way, almost to the tier 1 turret. So it's, it's nearly global. Really, really, really nice item. Um, and a common build, you know, is just these, threes, th these three items paired up. The Redemption, the Chemtech, and the Moonstone. It's completely, you know, it is, is a common build. And then you're having Control Wards in your final slot. And then when you're a high enough level, and once you've completed your support item, you'll have the option to pick up the Ward Stone. Which will then com convert automatically at level 13 into the Vigilant Ward Stone. Which will allow you to place more wards on the map. So you'll be able to have four uh, Stealth Wards. And you'll be able to have... Uh, two control wards on the map at the same time. Plus you get lots of extra uh, bonus stats there. You're getting 12% uh, extra ability power, uh, haste, attack damage, and bonus health. Obviously we don't care about the attack damage, but the other stats are pretty nice. Uh, you've also got 15 ba ability haste there as well, so your cooldowns are going to get low, much, 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 much lower, and you're going to be entering into around about the 50 to 55% cooldown reduction mark with this uh, with this build. So yeah, it's uh, Janet is a, is a really nice chance right now. Her win rates are super good. Um, throughout the season, there is a good chance that she may get nerfed a bit more because of this this change on her it is overall pretty strong. I will say, if you are particularly scared of doing trades in lane, maybe you're not sure. Um, I think she's like a really good kind of starter champion uh, in order to understand, you know, what you need to be scared of really um and you, you don't ha and you absolutely don't want to trade with jenna in lane you don't want to be going up and doing w poke and doing auto attacks um because her damage is incredibly low one of the if not the lowest uh support of any support that you can play so you're definitely going to be playing that much more like i want to say scared play style um but as long as you're paying attention uh to engages and Assassins jumping your key targets and you're peeling from them. So you're disengaging and you're basically playing backline a lot You're not going to be setting up too many engages with your Q um, You're going to be you're going to be doing a generally a pretty good job And you're going to be annoying the crap out of the enemy team and that's basically your, your job is just to be super super annoying Pretty passive. It's not uncommon as I mentioned to not to have even zero deaths in a game uh, or in like the very low digits at least any like the one two three deaths in a game it is Super super common when playing playing Janna. Her death rate is actually very very low because of that The downsides of that though is uh, She is vulnerable to a couple of champions like the other supports that we mentioned earlier like Nami and Soraka can bully her in lane because They do more damage and they can sustain off of any poke that Janna tries to deal back but she's incredibly strong against tanks, particularly ones like Leona. It's a big one, but basically any tank she can do a really good job against. And she does a really good job at handling assassins, particularly in the mid game, like we were mentioning uh, in those team fights. Just being able to peel for a high value target on your team is incredibly invaluable. So I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. I hope you guys try out this uh, this glacial augment Janna build. It is definitely Super fun to play once you get into the mindset of, you know, your poking lane sucks. Just play really defensively. And uh, if you are interested in more support guides and tier lists and what champions are hot and rot hot and not right now <laughs> this season, then be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel.
Uh, as I mentioned, I think I maybe mentioned earlier, we're looking to do Senna next. So if Senna's right up your, you know, looking, you know, kind of a champion that you want to play, or particularly if you're an AD carry main transitioning into support, I would highly recommend uh, Senna for, for you. And I'll be making a guide for her very shortly because she did get a mini rework on her Q. And I'll be covering that in the next guide. So make sure you subscribe. All the best, take care, and uh, good luck on the Rift. Bye-bye.